Thanks for joining us on this edition of National Focus. I'm Nisha Charles. Coming up, Crime Stoppers Dominica launches initiative to inspire youth to report crimes. Residents of Sen House Castle Bruce get a new motorable road, and we will bring you highlights of Public Service Day Awards 2015. Stay tuned for details of these and other stories after this. If you can believe this... Come by my house and let me show you some movies. Why can't you believe this? Some mothers don't believe their own children when they say they've been sexually abused and they don't report it. Remember, if anyone asks to see or touch their private parts, touches them inappropriately, shows them or forces them to touch one's private parts, has sex with them, shows them pornographic material, or deliberately lets them hear or see the act of sex, then it is sexual abuse. Believe your child and report the sexual abuse. For more information about child abuse, contact these agencies. This message brought to you by UNICEF and this station. Thanks for staying with us. Residents of On the Snow Sen House in the community of Castle Bruce now have a new motorable road. The road renovations are funded by the government of Dominica to the tune of over $150,000. Honorable Member of Parliament for the Castle Bruce constituency, Johnson Drago, says the repairs were necessary. The road on the snow really and truly was in, in a bad state. Uh, we knew that we had to do the Shallows the, the, the Sen House Road, but we needed to take the Shallows Road to a higher level in terms of we are doing the Shallows Road in three phases. So the people of Jalousy, of St. House are very happy. We've just spent well over 150000 for this motorable road. It has really enhanced the, the beauty of the area. The, the um, NEP beautification staff has kicked in. So we have the flowers being planted one time. And, 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 and it makes for a beautiful sight, number one. Secondly, for, and it's a comfort for both motorists and pedestrians. The residents know all too well the hardship of the previous road. Two residents spoke to GIS News about their experience. We've had such a miserable road for so long. I mean, we spoke to several power reps in the past, you know, trying to get this road done. And finally, on the Mr. Johnson Drago, we got our road. And I'm telling you, the people of St. are very, very grateful because to, just to walk there, the, the water coming in, the, you know, overflowing the drain, the culvert was bad. It used to always take piece of the concrete. When um, during, um, on the 2nd of, of uh, the 4th of November, uh, Committee of service. We used to always patch the people who come together and we'll patch and patch and patch and the rain will just take all little pieces of concrete because it's always a little piece, a little piece, you know, not joining together, nothing really sticking. So every time water will take it and go. But now we have a solid road and I'm telling you, Senos people are very, very grateful for that road. For years we really wanted the road and it beautified the place and our Senos is beautiful. Now all we need is some nice big houses. Crime Stoppers Dominica is on a drive to create more awareness among youth. The organization held a press conference at the Fortean Hotel on Tuesday to launch its Crime Stoppers School Contest. Participants will compete in essay writing, poetry, art, short stories and creation of jingles. The competition is open to both primary and secondary schools across the island. Mikael Henderson Del Sol, Public Relations Officer of Crime Stoppers Dominica, revealed that 64 schools on the island have been contacted to participate. She explains the requirements of the various categories of the contests. A poem can be written under the theme, Ways in which youth can help prevent crime. That applies to both primary and high schools. For the art category, we have to interpret in art the theme, Effects of Crime on My Community and How We Can Help Keep It Safe. For the jingle, also open to primary and high school students, we produce a short jingle, no more than one minute, using both of the themes that I've already described. The story, short story, is open to the primary school students. And so it's about 150 words, short story about an incident where one or more individuals used Crime Stoppers, the tip line, to help solve or prevent a crime in their neighborhood. So it would be a fictional story, of course. Uh, essay writing is open to the high school students. It will also be separated 
from first form to third form. Um, it's a 500 word essay on how Crime Stoppers Dominica can contribute to a safer society. And forms four to five will also write a 500 essay word on the effects of crime in their community and how we can help to keep it safe. The contest was designed to inspire youth to be involved in crime reporting and prevention. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of National Security, Gerard Jajak, says that everyone should be involved in matters of national security and thanked Crime Stoppers for their work. What, what happens here today is um, it, 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 sim it symbolizes the kind of uh, cooperation that the ministry embraces, public-private cooperation. Um, Crime Stoppers, as the statistics have shown through Mrs. Delsol, has played a tremendous role in assisting the police, in particular, in solving crimes. And therefore, I, uh, being here right now is not just support for the initiative, but also a way of thanking, publicly thanking Crime Stoppers for its contribution to building a more secure and safe Dominica. We believe that security doesn't come solely through construction of police stations, or uh, acquiring vehicles, it's also a people, a people matter. People have to be involved so that they can feel secure. And that's why crime, crime supposed to us such a great idea. And um, therefore, being here today also um, is, is for the support for Crime Suppers as an initiative. Lime Dominica and Jay Astefans have provided iPad minis and phones to be used as prizes for winners of the competition. For this competition, our first prizes will be iPad minis. Second prizes will be Alcatel one-touch tablets. So we have been fortunate that the corporate citizens like J. Astapan and Company and Lime Dominica have come forward to help Crime Stoppers to do, to uh, put this initiative forward and have it be a success. February 13th is the deadline for entries for the competition. Crime Stoppers Dominica was initiated by Genevieve Astefan and was launched in September of 2012 to help prevent and solve crimes on the island. Gregor Nassif, chairman of the board of directors of Crime Stoppers, says he is pleased that Dominica's move to initiate the organization was proactive. We all think of um, Dominica as a relatively safe place. And in most of the countries where where um, Crime Stoppers has started, it has been a reactive, a reactive initiative to a very serious increase um, in um, crime. I think what is uh, very um, interesting and important is that we are taking a proactive initiative. So we do not want for crime to reach an, uh, you know, a, a a very high um, level, yeah. And so we are still, still essentially in the PR stage where we want to do various initiatives like this. Since May of 2013, over 1,000 calls have been made from Dominica. There have been 80 valid tips and 15 arrests made. If you would like to report a crime, call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-8477 or visit their website www.crimestoppersdominica.org. The public service sector held its biennial recognition and awards ceremony on Friday. GIS's Tasia Flozak now brings you highlights of Public Service Day 2015. Following six months of activities leading up to Public Service Day, 99 individuals and various divisions within the public sector were recognized for outstanding service rendered to the Commonwealth of Dominica at this year's Public Service Awards Ceremony. The ceremony, which convened at the Arawak House of Culture on Friday, January 9th, saw the attendance of the Dominica's Head of State, His Excellency Charles A. Savre and Mrs. Savre, former President and featured Speaker, His Excellency Elud Williams, and other government officials. Every two years, the public service takes time to recognize and appreciate the service provided by civil servants, 77 of which retired this year after 30 to 40 years of service. 
Additionally, awards will be stored on serving public officers for extraordinary performance in the execution of their duties. Carol Vivil was presented the Jerry Augustine Award, Rosalia Basil received the Temporary Officer Award, Alexia Valerie won the Junior Officer Award, Lydia Capitolin Tuse captured the Senior Officer and Winning Theme Award, Kerry Ann Remy received the Middle Management Award, and Jermaine Japier was awarded for Senior Management. The Honorable Acting Prime Minister Justina Charles says public service is indispensable to national development. Your achievements have contributed significantly to strengthening efficiency in your various sectors, which will ultimately lead to a sustainable future for yourselves and the citizens of this beloved country. The importance of this sustained growth and development is articulated in the 2014 to 2018 Growth and Social Protection Strategy. The priorities, namely, a sound fiscal policy and administrative reform, including creating an enabling environment for local private investments and the attraction of foreign direct investment. Honorable Charles says it is essential to value and recognize the hard work of individuals to increase productivity and enhance confidence. Former President Elud Williams delivered featured remarks at Friday's ceremony. The much-anticipated award ceremony was preceded by six months of activities, including charitable donations, dollar days, a sports day, hikes, a talent night, a church service, and information expos. This year's event, themed an efficient service, a sustainable future, was officially launched on June 25th at the Fort Young Hotel. Public Service Day was initiated in 1999 to recognize excellence in the delivery and performance of public servants with the hope of improving efficiency and ultimately the administration of public service. Thank you, Tassia, for that report. We'll bring you more from that ceremony in a subsequent newscast. January 2015 is recognized as Drug Awareness Month under the theme Message of Hope, Drug Use Disorders Are Preventable and Treatable. Head of the Acute Psychiatric Unit, Dr. Griffin Benjamin, commends the Honorable Minister for Health and the Environment, Dr. Kenneth Darrow, for recognizing the link between substance abuse and APU admissions. Dr. Benjamin made the comment at a press conference earlier this week. The Minister made a statement a couple of days ago to indicate that about 70% of the people who are admitted to the psychiatric ward have a substance use disorder. They may, they, their admission is related to substance abuse, substance use, drug abuse. And so when you, when, you, when you were to assess that statement from the minister, it is saying that policymakers are aware that drug use in Dominica is a major problem. It's affecting the entire health system. It's not a political problem, it's a medical and social problem. And so I was happy when the minister mentioned that. Meantime, Dr. Benjamin revealed that a proposal has been made to government to address vagrancy. We were able to put together in the Ministry of Health uh, a document, a proposal that the Minister of Health has in his hands to, to, to develop some rehabilitation program for vagrants in the streets of Roseau, those who are actually harassing tourists. It's not for all of the vagrants, but for some of the villains, and those who are most disturbing to the public, those who roam Bayfront and around Rosa, who sleep in the street corner, who urinate around the place, we propose that the psychiatric unit can be used as a day hospital facility, whereas to say from eight to four, we are willing to bring in a small number of vagrants, those we think that are most disturbed, give them an opportunity to re habilitate to become healthy again, to dress properly, bathe properly, clean themselves, use their hands and their minds more actively. And in the evening, I think the government has come up with, an, well, it's pro the other proposal is to get them into knowledge, something knowledge, like that, Bounty Liverpool program, so they can sleep over in the night, wisdom to know, sleep over in the night and come back to us next morning for the week. The head of the APU believes that the vagrants will come to the unit of their own free will. He says that the staff of the APU are up to the challenge of getting them rehabilitated. We are proposing that we are willing to assist, but we know that's going to be a challenge for us also. Why is it a challenge? Because psychiatry 
the laws of Dominica doesn't give us the power to just pick up a vagrant and bring here. It only allows us to admit people who are referred to us by another doctor, treat them and discharge them. We are saying that the vagrant should come willingly and stay willingly. We believe they will if we work with them because we are accustomed of working with them anyhow. Honorable Minister for Health and the Environment, Dr. Kenneth Darrow, confirmed that the proposal to eliminate vagrancy will soon be presented to Cabinet for consideration. Dr. Darrow was speaking at the 14th annual APU concert. A proposal to establish a the hospital at the acute psychiatric unit in an effort to manage a vagrancy situation in and around the city of Roseau is soon to be presented to Cabinet for consideration. It is common knowledge and no secret that this situation is having a negative impact on our visitors, especially those from the cruise ships. Clearly, this would require the collaboration of all and sundry, including, but not limited to, tourism, legal affairs, national security, housing, and other social services. But the Ministry of Health is prepared to lead the fight in addressing it, and a social assessment, impact assessment, sorry, will soon be conducted that will guide a long-term policy on the management of vagrancy here in Dominica. And before we go, here are a few announcements. Private candidates registered to write the January 2015 CXC examinations are asked to collect their timetables from the local registrar's office during normal office hours. Please be guided accordingly. The Ministry of Justice, Immigration and National Security is giving notice that the High Court of Justice of the Commonwealth of Dominica will begin its sitting for the trial of criminal cases on Tuesday, the 13th day of January 2015 at 9 a.m. at the High Court Bayfront Roseau with the arraignment of accused persons. The Comptroller of Inland Revenue Division informs all persons that the deadline for submitting requests for tax adjustments in respect of mortgage interest and student loans is Tuesday, January 13, 2014. The Youth Development Division invites applications from young men and women wishing to pursue training under the Youth Skills Training Program in Computer Skills at the Castle Bruce Youth Center, the Roseau Youth Enterprise Center, the Grand Bay Youth Center, the Portsmouth Youth Center and Wesley Youth Center to commence in February 2015. Electrical wiring at the Roseau Youth Center and Woodwork. Application forms can be obtained from the Youth Development Division's office on 3 Charles Avenue, Goodwill, or from the district youth offices and should be returned no later than January 30th, 2015. The Roseau City Council wishes to advise vendors selling marketable commodities on the sidewalks on Old Street, King George V Street, Cross Street, Independent Street, and other areas in the city that they should desist from this practice, effective 31st January 2015. In accordance with legislation, all marketable commodities must be sold at the designated place, that is, the Roseau Market. Vendors refusing to comply will be prosecuted. Persons wishing to vend for the carnival season must obtain and fill out the necessary application from the office of the Roseau City Council and pay the associated fees prior to erection of bars or stalls on the sidewalks for Carnival Monday and Tuesday, that's February 16th and 17th, 2015, and also outside the respective venues where Carnival activities are being held in the city of Roseau. Bars and stalls erected without the necessary authorization of the council will be confiscated and a fee will be imposed for repossession of the same. The Forestry and Wildlife Division wishes to inform the general public that the official hunting and freshwater fishing season came to an end on December 31, 2014, and there should be no hunting of game species nor taking of freshwater species. The division would also like to further remind the traveling public that an export permit is required to take wildlife out of the country. In this regard, the division will continue to issue export permits until January 31, 2015. The division would like to thank the general public and its partners for their support throughout 2014 and wishes everyone a happy new year. Members of the public are reminded that in keeping with the provisions of the Social Security Amendment Act 2 of 2012, and the Social Security Amendment Regulations 4, 7, and 8 of 2012, the following changes are to take effect as of January 1, 2015. Increase in pensionable age, that is, the age at which an insured person who has satisfied the prescribed contribution conditions is entitled to receive age benefit, 
shall increase from 61 and a half years, that is 61 years and six months, to 62 years. Notwithstanding the above stated increase, an insured person who has satisfied the necessary contribution requirements for receipt of an age benefit may at any time after attaining the age of 60 years opt to claim for the payment of a reducing age benefit. Increase in the contribution rate. The contribution rate in respect of employees, self-employed persons, and voluntary contributors shall increase by a quarter or 0.25%. Further clarification on these changes can be obtained from the Office of the Dominica Social Security. Coming up, tips on slowing down. Dominica is blessed with an abundance of water, but getting it to your home is an expensive venture. You have a responsibility to conserve water, to use it wisely. Remember the old adage, you never miss the water till the well runs dry. Think water, think life. The black feet of yoga fungus can survive on banana and plantain leaves even after they have been cut from the tree. Farmers and hucksters are encouraged to use alternate cushioning material when moving produce from farm to the market. Do not use banana and plantain leaves as cushioning. It is against the law to move banana and plantain trash from the field. Obey the law and stop the spread of black sikatuka today. It's hard to slow down when you are trying to do a million things. Instead, make a conscious choice to do less. It's not enough to just slow down. You need to actually be mindful of whatever you're doing at the moment. And when you find yourself speeding up and stressing out, pause and take a deep breath. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gisnewsdominica, and follow our Twitter at GIS Dominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts or our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here on the GIS News production team, I'm Nisha Charles. Thanks for watching. <laughs>